Welcome to Andrew Says, and I wouldn't lie to you, except for 17 other times where I have. Let's talk about YouTube demonetization. And by now, you've clearly heard about people being censored, or anyone left of Stalin not being able to have their voices heard on YouTube. But you probably haven't heard about it a lot lately, and that's because it's gotten a lot better. Does it still happen to certain people or on certain topics? Yes, of course, and it shouldn't. But we haven't heard a lot about it because it's getting a lot better. Now, some YouTubers have actually talked about this, including Ethan Klein at H3H3. It's time to do this differently. They have been improving, though. Well, I think YouTube. people have been less aggressive. Like, um, we had this video on Ethan and Ella where we reacted to this lady, like, dancing to hip-hop. Mm. And it was apparently attempted to be removed, but YouTube said no. So they'll send you an email saying, this was, <coughs> there was an attempt, but we said no. Actually, so. I have to give huge credit to that yeah. department. That used to never happen. That that that's actually really happened to us several times where yeah. we got an email being like, and the best part is they say who tried to take it down. <laughs> yeah. It's for some reason when someone tries to take it down and they reject it, I see their email, their phone number, their name, their channel. I get their social security number basically. <laughs> no. <laughs> and they're like, this idiot at this address tried to remove your video and we gave him the middle finger. <laughs> but somehow when these assholes do it, it's a total fucking shot in the dark. Now credit where credit is due, and they are still mostly talking about copyright claims, which have also gotten better, I feel like. I feel like YouTube has given me, at least in particular, more creative uh, leeway here in terms of what gets demonetized or what gets taken down, so I thank them for that. Now the copyright rule is still a 30-day rule where somebody can claim that you've infringed on their content and they have 30 days to respond to an appeal by you, which is kind of insane. And the worst I've seen of this personally is from TVO in Canada. Now they're a government-funded channel here and they wanted to claim and stop me from showing a video of Black Lives Matter leader Toronto calling Justin Trudeau a terrorist. So I had to wait an entire 30 days when this stuff was out of the news cycle for my video to be posted. Now something else you don't hear from conservative media or right-wing media is the funding that's involved. I don't like hearing this, it's everybody against us mentality and help us, poor me. Now while I agree with them more than I would agree with the opposite side, I still feel like they have sponsors, they have financial backing, they have editors, they have cameramen, they have all these people that I don't have the benefit of having. So it's hard for me to be like, oh, poor you, it's the the whole uh, internet is against you sort of thing. Now just like the Young Turks have their greasy, greased up, bacon grease benefactors, Ruben has his greasy benefactors, they're just on opposite sides of the spectrum. And I know for a fact that there are some people who have seemingly come up out of the woodwork, spontaneous new stars. I know for a fact that they have funding, they have other people editing their videos, and they have people uh, pushing them in the right direction. It's kind of like a 90s sitcom or like a Seth MacFarlane cartoon. You have this rubric where you fill in the blank and you cover all certain topics and you can get views. You know the stuff I'm talking about, like SJW attacks or like marching for freedom, all that sort of stuff. So just don't think that you're immune to getting duped into believing that somebody is righteous or grassroots just because you agree with them on a few topics. There are people out there funding a lot of this stuff and it's not as uh, spontaneous that they've gotten popular. It's, n it's not as out of the woodworks as you may think. Now obviously people like H3, H3 and PewDiePie are massive names. They probably pull in massive amounts of dollars per month, but they still got there on their own in terms of of their content, it's just them. And they're much more fair about news coverage, especially when it pertains to them. When they get roped into something that the mainstream media has completely overblown and over-exaggerated, of course the Wall Street Journal always comes to mind for adpocalypse, they actually show you what people are saying and they give you their opinion. Now I think they're much better than Philip DeFranco, who is often just slightly better than headline reading in my opinion. Now that's no knock on him, I actually like him overall and I do think that he's necessary and I appreciate him but sometimes um, it just takes a couple sources, his show just takes a couple sources and they kind of treat that as fact and treats it like there's no bias involved in the sources that they found just because they found multiple ones. Do I think you're better off watching the Philip DeFranco show than CNN or MSNBC? Yes, a hundred thousand times yes, but if you follow politics closely, and I like to think that I do, at times it kind of reinforces why you can't just believe one person just because you agree with them on something, uh, they may be completely wrong about something else. 
Now, part of that is always admitting that you could do more, you can read more, you can be more informed on any topic, and any topic that you do want to speak about, try to be very, very informed. Like me with Scientology. Now, I was watching the H3 podcast talk about Michael Cohen recently, and they're far more honest than the mainstream media. Take a look. All right. Michael Cohen Truth Fund. On July 2nd, 2018, Michael Cohen declared his independence from Donald Trump and his commitment to tell the truth. And not because he was strong-armed by the FBI to avoid criminal charges against himself. Michael Cohen made the decision to take a legal responsibility and continue his commitment to tell the truth. Michael decided to put his family and his country first. Now, Michael needs your financial help. Michael Cohen, yes, who in 2015 reportedly purchased a $58 million apartment building in New York's Upper East Side, needs your help desperately. Head on over to GoFundMe.com slash HQJUPJ slash Michael slash Cohen slash Truth slash Fun. <laughs> yes, the same Michael Cohen that had a salary from Donald Trump of $1 million a year is in desperate, desperate need of your help to fight the truth now that he is on the line for crimes <laughs> against the FBI. Yes, Michael Cohen, the sad, unfortunate truth teller Mm. And we all support him in his hour of need. Now, these YouTubers, while they are big, they're still liberal. They're still, I feel like, what a classical liberal used to be or what a liberal or Democrat was even five years ago, even if that was what the parties were pretending to be. Those are the type of people that followed them. But now I feel like there's nowhere else for those people to go except for independent media. Now, you're not going to hear that on Morning Joe. You're not going to hear that on Rachel Maddow, what they were saying. You're going to hear Michael Cohen so brave, Stormy Daniels is, I don't know, the savior of women, uh, orange man bad, and impeach Trump, death to Alex Jones. Thanks for watching, and if you like my haircut and can't hear any of the construction going on in the background, consider donating to me on Patreon.